Oh, this is an update on our threat for severe weather, and it may begin as early as midnight Friday night into Saturday morning. And we've been watching this time frame for a while, but it has been showing the model guidance says that the upper levels may be too warm and there may be a lid on it. However, we're starting to see that opinion change a little bit with the high resolution models. And the reason that's a concern is because we could see supercell type storms at two or three o'clock in the morning uh, when you're sleeping. So don't sleep on this one. We'll continue to keep you up to date. We will be fully staffed through the night tomorrow night and all the way through the day Saturday. But uh, we're watching the instability really start to build. This will be noon Saturday. So there's going to be changes to this. There's likely going to be a few surprises to this. There usually is when you're dealing with an outbreak of severe weather, including the potential for long tracked supercell type tornadoes and then you're going to have the main line coming in the highest risk is basically from north alabama down into jackson mississippi south of tuscaloosa just west of auburn but the entire state will be impacted by this significant weather event this is round one if you want to call it that this is the separate piece of energy coming in from the north the other one will come as energy comes in from the south and that's the one that's going to be dominated by the much higher intensity of thunderstorms however i don't want to take anything away from what may happen overnight friday night into saturday morning so isolated tornadoes dime size hail frequent lightning wind gusts over 60 miles per hour about one maybe two inches of rain with this round and this isn't the movement of the line of thunderstorms this is just the shift of where the maximum severe weather threat's going to be. So we're talking destructive winds, perhaps 80 miles per hour, even straight line winds with the individual storms and with the squall line coming in. Long track tornadoes, we're gonna to get to what that means coming up in a second. Quarter size or larger hail, and then a two to four inch rainfall. At some point, this could turn into a, just a huge rain event with flash flooding and we will watch that aspect as well. Here is round one. This is for the round coming in after midnight, roughly midnight to 4 a.m. from areas along and west of I-65, 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. to the east of I-65. So uh, just because you may not be highlighted in this early on doesn't mean that you won't have an impact. So again, just want to kind of bring myself full screen and talk to you and adjust this a little bit. So that's phase one of the storm system. Now let's talk about phase two. This is the timeline for storms coming in from the south and moving northeast. So eventually we're going to see a push of thunderstorms moving to the northeast. And then as we go through the day, there's going to be a shift, potential supercells moving to the east northeast. We'll watch some of those storms. They may turn to the right and those will be the most violent storms as we go through the day. And then eventually it all ends with a squall line moving from the west to the east as we take a look at what we call the helicity tracks and before i get into this too much and confuse everyone on what this is all about what this is is the model guidance saying we may have a mesocyclone we may have all the ingredients within a supercell storm or even a squall line that it could have this rotational track and it's the long track that we want to watch and we want to watch these colors here as it goes from strong to very strong to extreme. You see that at the top of the screen there, uh, right up there. So that's what we're gonna be looking at when we go through this. I will say there could be some of these types of tracks early or in the morning, but this particular model only is going with after the lunch hour or so. So here is a look at 11 o'clock in the morning. And what we're gonna do is kind of slide this over so you get the idea of what's happening. So as we move this forward, and uh, the other thing I wanna emphasize is don't, look at this in particularly in one location don't like see this and say oh moving through Haleyville to Moulton to Athens that's exactly where it's going don't prepare like that this gives us the idea of the spacing so this would indicate you know four potentially separate tornado tracks with that that's about three in the afternoon notice as we go forward in time we see these continuous tracks here and these are some favorable areas in north alabama for severe weather and tornadoes so you got haleyville to molten the east limestone and up towards meridianville harvest monrovia and then the other one is going to be the northwest side of coleman all the way through say priceville up to huntsville and northeast towards uh, um, new market and then other tracks here from albertville to the north and east and this is going to change over time with each model run. There's going to be a little shift. But the key to notice here is that it's still showing these. They are showing up. And when you see these show up, there's concern uh, for the possibility of these longer track tornadoes. 
And within all of this, we can still see these separate tornadoes that don't have these long tracks. So keep that in mind. Again, I'm trying to prepare you. You need to be having your final preparations by tomorrow night for your safety plans. If you live in a mobile home, I would not stay there. I would find more adequate shelter. As we get to the, uh, the, the pre-sunrise round of storms here, this is 1 o'clock in the morning. We're going to watch this area here. The dynamics are favorable for supercell thunderstorms in this area. This is the area is what we call conditionally unstable. That means it becomes more unstable with one condition is that that is the cap breaks. The latest high resolution models show this cap breaking. Therefore, you get these separate thunderstorms and that's what this is representing. So these would be potentially supercells and they would track northeast. So we would watch these and this is why it's going to impact people differently because it's not one big storm moving through the entire area. And keep in mind the odds of being hit by a tornado are extremely low. And even seeing a tornado is very, very low. I've only seen a few in my entire career of uh, 30 years working in weather. So you watch here 345 in the morning. This would be early morning wake up. We've got this potential supercell moving uh, through Madison and northern Madison County, Harvest Monrovia, watching that area. But the model guidance isn't really going to be spot on accurate. It's telling us what the general setup is in the atmosphere. So just because you say, oh, it's going to be west of Huntsville, we're not, I don't have to worry about it in Scottsboro. This is where you just need to stay vigilant as we go through the early morning hours. And then one last little round moving through Fort Payne. Uh, the air is going to be a little bit more rain cooled in far northeast Alabama to begin with. Uh, but this will all change between 8 and 9 o'clock. This is when we're going to see this big surge of instability come in from the south. There's always a possibility it's going to stay raining and saturate everything, and, and that will make everything all, all better. But in this case, the winds are so strong out of the south that I don't think we're going to get that. We're going to get this push of instability moving in from 9 o'clock on. So a 12-hour period of strong to severe thunderstorms. Make sure you've got a comfortable shelter. And what I mean by that is uh, you're in there, you don't get claustrophobic. I know some of these storm shelters are just too small. I had one and it's just, it was too small. So that's why I've built a bigger one. And I think about your pets too. Where are they going to be, right? So what I mean about a comfortable shelter, you want to have water in your shelter because you may be going in and out of your shelter at, at several times during the day. If we get these long track tornadoes, we may be covered up at some point. So again, that's what I mean by make sure it's comfortable. And as we continue on here, this is just 11 o'clock in the morning. We'll continue to move on here and notice multiple rounds and instability continues to build over here near Florence. You don't see it on this graphic. You just see 62. But what that is, is likely going to be the dew point temperature. Air will be completely saturated. So here comes the main line. Again, additional supercells possible here as we go through the day. But at some point, hopefully, we just reach a point where it's just saturated and raining. Unfortunately, by the looks of this line here, how it's kind of snaked, it's got twists in it, that may not be possible. This will be the main brunt of the squall line coming in. This could have winds 60, 70, maybe 80 miles per hour in embedded tornadoes, and that will eventually move out. So once again, finalize your preparation. Finalize where you think you're going to need to be seeking shelter. If you have parents, maybe they're across, uh, across the way. If you, again, mobile home, it's not safe. Mobile home will not be safe uh, during this event. I really want to stress that. Uh, still some time for change here. I'll have another update like this in the next 24 hours, and that's pretty much going to be the last update regarding this event. And then we won't really know exactly what's going to happen until the whole thing unfolds. So sometimes there's surprises, as I mentioned earlier. Again, uh, go ahead and subscribe, like, and uh, we appreciate you following us here.